Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sustainable Finance Podcast, where you can learn everything you want to know about sustainable and impact investing from leaders in the field. I'm Paul Ellis, your host for these weekly conversations about developments in this fast-growing industry. Our guest today is Amit Buri, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder at the Global Impact Investing Network, otherwise known as the GIN, right, Amit? That's right. And we're glad to have you join us today for the Sustainable Finance Podcast. I want to discuss the roadmap for the future of impact investing, which was published in March of 2018, and how that report is being used by asset owners and managers since then. But first, let's talk about the GIN Investor Forum 2019, which recently convened in Amsterdam on October 2nd and 3rd. You were joined there by 1,200 impact investing delegates from around the world, and the forum addressed important industry topics such as the role of fiduciary duty in impact investing, scaling with integrity, and the risks of impact washing, which is a fairly new term, right, in the industry, how to measure and manage impact in addressing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, otherwise known as the SDGs. So please share with our subscribers to the Sustainable Finance Podcast, Amit, how the focus on these topics was received and what you and your team at the GIN heard from the delegates about how they're integrating these issues day to day in pursuit of their impact goals as investors and asset managers. Well, first, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here and really appreciate the time to talk about these important topics. Uh, we, as you mentioned, we just hosted the GIN Investor Forum in Amsterdam. Uh, and this is our, the largest global convening of impact investors. Uh, it included over 1,200 people from over 60 countries. Hmm. Uh, and just to give you a sense for who was in the room, um, it includes uh, large institutional investors, um, you know, asset owners, as well as a variety of asset managers, RIAs, specialized fund managers, global investment banks, philanthropic foundations, uh, and uh, family offices and individual investors. Um, what all those different types of people have in common, regardless of where they're based or what types of institution they work for, um, is they are interested in putting their money to work, not only to generate their financial objectives, but to have a positive impact on the world. Okay. And that could be anything from like uh, local issues, like affordable housing in their own communities, to big global issues, like helping to mitigate the, um, the climate change. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, are, are really seeing impact investing um, booming all around the world. Um, they, we have activity on six continents. Um, some markets like the US and the UK and India and Kenya uh, have very developed impact investing communities. Mm -hmm. um, others are more emergent. Um, but this is a time of rapid growth, um, and I think that impact investing is really going mainstream um, as we speak. Um, now, we covered a lot of big topics at the conference, mm -hmm. uh, in part because it is a gathering of practitioners. So these are folks who are you know, constructing and managing portfolios, um, most of them pretty big, um, but some of them um, you know, relatively small, um, but are all trying to figure out the practical issues of how they build the most impactful portfolios possible. Um, and we did frame it under the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, mm -hmm. um, which were launched by the United Nations, and really focus um, the global community's attention on those critical objectives, like ending poverty, um, you know, achieving gender equality, uh, helping to provide clean and affordable energy access to everyone in the world. Um, and that is um, a great frame for us to use to kick off that conference and to really guide the discussion uh, of this great global network that we work with. Amit, you mentioned that the, uh, the, the impact investors that you work with are across a, a wide spectrum in terms of assets that they manage, the institutions that they work for. Uh, if you would give our, our subscribers just some indication of where, what that range really is mm -hmm. and what people are addressing mm -hmm. uh, in different parts of the world. For, so for example, I, I've had a number of conversations and done podcasts with folks who are working in places like East Africa. Mm -hmm. And they're starting, their, their impact funds are really focused on uh, seed capital mm -hmm. for small 
businesses. But that's just one of the many different types of investors that we find in this part of the industry. Yeah. Give us an idea of the spectrum. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'd say, you know, just using a simple kind of split between institutional investors and individual investors. Um, yes. You know, on the institutional side, we see some of the world's largest pension funds and insurance companies, you know, vast sums of capital, um, you know, and, and uh, that are really active in impact investing and looking to build their portfolios. Um, also, endowments of um, colleges, you know, universities, foundations, and um, even health or uh, you know, hospitals and health networks uh, that are also thinking about how they can make impact investments using their assets. Now, on the individual side. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of activity amongst the ultra high net worth uh, community, so those who have family offices or, or are served by private banking platforms. Um, and one of the big trends is a lot of movement in the um, individual investor community into the retail space. Um, and so we are seeing more and more individuals looking to their financial advisors or their private banks to provide them with impact investing opportunities. That is a trend that we're seeing globally. I see. Um, so whether it's you know in the United States or North America or in Europe, um, I've been to you know, Asia twice this year in places like uh, Singapore and Tokyo, and, and before that Hong Kong. Um, and if you speak to um, anyone serving um, individual investors in those markets, they all say that their clients are starting to ask them for impact investing products, um, and they are working to catch up to that demand. Um, now, where people want to invest really knows no boundaries, um, and so we um, see activity on all six continents, um, all in six inhabited continents, continents I should say, um, and um, this is everything from people who are motivated to have an impact in places like South Asia or East Africa uh, to you know, investments that are focused on you know, organic farming um, in places like upstate New York uh, or in, in the Netherlands, um, and I think that's one of the things that's so exciting about impact investing. Um, is that it is a, an approach that you can use across any number of geographies, any number of sectors. You know, so housing, energy, health, education, financial services, all have opportunities for impact. Mm -hmm. um, and we are just beginning to um, like catch up to all of the potential that we have in this market to achieve your financial return objectives alongside having a positive impact on the world. That's great, thank you for that. Uh, perspective. And I want to come back to the institu institutional uh, um, and the private sector mm -hmm. approach to this. But first of all, let's, let's uh, have you share your thoughts on the following statement from the highlights report, uh, the roadmap for the future of impact investing. In that report, you said that the GIN envisions a fast approaching future when social and environmental factors are integrated into business decisions simply by default as the normal way of doing things. And in particular, if you would talk about how this is already being done mm -hmm. through uh, European Union policy protocols, and even in the United States, some state-based environmental and social yeah. mandates. Yeah. How is this happening? Yeah, well, I think it, this is such a dynamic time where there's such an evolution in conversations about what's the role of capital in society um, and how do we want to invest in a world that is more inclusive and more sustainable. Um, we are seeing movement amongst policymakers all around the world, um, and we're seeing signals of support um, from the traditional private sector. Hmm. Yeah, so dating back to um, you know the, the recent letter from Larry Fink, uh, you head of BlackRock, mm -hmm. uh, saying that the you know the business has a social purpose. Um, the Business Roundtable yes. had over 180 CEOs recently who um, penned a letter saying that um, companies should be accountable not just to shareholders to a broader set of stakeholders, um, and that includes uh, customers, employees, suppliers, and communities. Um, so really, like broadening the um, the environment in which a business leader is operating, and mm -hmm. to, um, and shaping reshaping the way how they think about their accountability and performance. Um, combine that with a whole bunch of um, you know tech billionaires and finance billionaires who are now saying we need to shift our capital system to be more inclusive um, and to be more sustainable. Um, and then on the policy side, 
Um, you know, everything from signals um, from Mark Carney, um, you know, who's saying that we need a, uh, you know, running a coalition of central bankers um, yes. who are saying that we need to build a more kind of sustainable, um, you know, financial system uh, to heads of state. Uh, so um, and so we are seeing a lot of movement um, in the EU around sustainable finance uh, that is going to just send ripples, you know, not only through the European market, but through all the asset managers and um, and supply chains of those firms. I was recently in Tokyo um, and was following the hosting of the G20 mm -hmm. um, and Prime Minister Abe had issued a declaration that um, that there needed to be a greater focus on innovative finance and impact investing to achieve the SDGs. Yes. Um, so we are now seeing a convergence of signals from um, influencers uh, and policymakers um, who are now starting to reshape the environment in which investors and businesses operate. Um, so that that and future we envision, you know, where impact becomes part of all investing, um, is you know that um, is underway. You know, we are making that transition. Good. Uh, and it's a really exciting time, but we can see the uh, ground shifting um, as we speak uh, in terms of how um, you know, investing and, um, and business will be conducted in the future. That's really good to hear. I'm glad that you're so optimistic. Now, the GIN roadmap also calls for six categories of action that impact investors and asset managers can focus on to achieve the roadmap's priority objectives. So please, if you would, briefly describe the six categories mm -hmm. and once again, tell our Sustainable Finance Podcast subscribers what you heard from delegates at the recent GIN Investor Forum about how they are implementing these action steps into their investment process and investor relations. Yeah, no, happy to. And this is obviously something that we see is absolutely critical. Um, before I dive in, though, I do want to um, you know, just follow up on the last um, comment around, like, you know, I'm absolutely an optimist, but I don't want anyone listening to this to feel complacent. You know, we have a lot of work to do yes. uh, when we're trying to address climate change and inequality. Um, we are starting to see big signals of support um, and some great movement in a positive direction, um, but we really need to accelerate action. Um, so it's a perfect pivot to the uh, roadmap and our categories of action uh, sure. where we need to see progress. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the roadmap was designed to set out in a, a high level agenda you know, that if we do want to actually build a sustainable and inclusive financial system, um, and that's absolutely what the GIN is focused on, that we need to look at how do we build the system that will support that. I see. Um, and so we divided that up into concrete action items, but in six categories. And I'll run through them one by one. Sure. So first is actually identity. And what we mean by that is being clear about what good impact investing looks like uh, and making sure that, that as the market grows, that we are growing it in the right way. You know, because ultimately what we want is not just capital at scale. We don't want to be able to just count lots of dollars or euros or rupees or yen that are associated with positive impact. We want to make sure they're achieving positive impact mm -hmm. and we need impact at scale. Um, and so we, um, this includes a whole bunch of work around impact measurement and management that we think is critical mm -hmm. to shaping a new way of investing. The second category is shifting behavior and expectations. You know, so how do we actually align the incentives and orientation of investors around achieving a positive impact? So this is everything from you know, um, updating financial theory, things like modern portfolio theory, to not just look at financial return and, and risk, but to also include uh, the dimension of impact. Um, and that's at the source of kind of like you know, shaping our thinking around finance, but all the way down to the practical levels of how do we align the right incentives to the achievement of impact. I see. Which could be on fund manager or advisor compensation schemes that really incentivize people to focus on impact. There's a great need for products, mm -hmm. all the way from institutional grade products to engage much you know, um, uh, you know, larger pools of investors who need to write big, big checks before they can, uh, like pension funds and others. Um, but we also need to develop a, um, a whole suite of new products for retail investors. The things that ordinary individuals thinking about the retirement or personal savings, you know, who may not have access to a family office um, and the types of investment opportunities you get through that platform, um, you know, but so that anyone can be an impact investor I and see. that it's frictionless. 
You know, so um, every we need to build a world where anyone can go to their financial advisor and say, I want to put my money to work to help address climate change and help you know, build a more sustainable local community and have um, uh, that financial advisor have all the products at their fingertips to satisfy that demand. Um, we need more tools and services. Uh, that's the fourth category, um, and that includes you know, better ratings for impact um, and also helping to build the tools that investors and advisors would need to allocate for impact. Uh, education and training is critical. Um, we're building a whole new capability in the financial services space, and so everything from professional development uh, training um, all the way down to kind of um, you know, uh, MBA programs, mm -hmm. which are already starting to incorporate impact into their curricula. Uh, and then last but not least, what we just spoke about is the policy and regulation. You're making sure the rules of the game, including things like fiduciary duty and um, investment incentives, are oriented around impact. So taking all these six categories together, um, we believe that this will help pave the way for a systemic shift in finance um, so that we can build a world where impact becomes part of all investing, you know, where it just becomes the new normal, um, where you know, we would just talk openly about here's how we're thinking about the impact of our portfolio, just like we would talk about any other element of performance today. Let's, let's go back to one of the terms that uh, I mentioned uh, you were going to be focusing on at the conference, and and that is impact washing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the, that's a term that is uh, sit, stands right alongside um, greenwashing mm -hmm. in the public market space, uh, if I'm interpreting those two correctly. But it's also a big concern now in the world of impact investing, and there are, um, as you said, policy. Uh, initiatives, not just in Europe, but in the U.S. Mm -hmm. recent, also recently, I believe, where there's focus on our, how do we keep growing the overall pie mm -hmm. and stay true to what we know mm -hmm. is the way to develop mm -hmm. impact investing. I've uh, read folks like uh, Jeff, uh, uh, Jed Emerson, who who say, well, really the the family offices, the institutional investors really have to lead this charge and do the deep source vetting of different types of strategies, et cetera, which will help to provide the retail type mm -hmm. of strategy. Is that mm -hmm. something that you uh, have um, uh, any perspective on yeah. right now yeah. in terms of how to do that? Yeah, we're thinking about this issue of impact washing a lot, and and you know a way to think about it um, that I think everyone can relate to is just around like the labeling of like what's healthy food. I see. Um, you can put the label healthy on just about anything that you sell. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean it is healthy. Right. Um, and we've gotten to the point where we know you can't really trust that. You have to look a bit deeper to figure out if something is actually good for you. Um, what we want to make sure happens with impact investing is that that term impact um, has a great deal of integrity uh, and credibility. Um, and what's motivated people to get interested in impact investing all over the world is this recognition um, that money has a purpose that's bigger than just making more money. Yes. Uh, and we have you know, um, just you know, globally consistent surveys of people, um, you know, particularly millennials, but also older generations, of people who want their money to be aligned with their values. Um, but what we need to make sure is that we as a financial services industry deliver I see. on that demand. Um, and so to a, we don't want a situation where this term loses its meaning, where it's get you know, diluted or washed, you know, just, it's just a wash you spread on something uh, that's actually kind of business as usual. Um, and so the, the reason why we focus on it at the gin um, is to really make sure that as we grow, and we need to grow, um, because we need to move a lot more capital to address the um, problems outlined in the sustainable development goals, things like addressing poverty and climate change. But we need to grow with integrity. Um, so we need to make sure that we're growing the right thing, you know, mm. high quality products that deliver on their financial promises and their impact promises. So a lot of the work that we do with the gin is in providing tools and resources for investors to be smart about how they achieve impact. Mm -hmm. uh, we launched these core characteristics for impact investing recently that just describe what you know, the um, behaviors that define good impact investing. So any advisor or any institutional investor out there can say, you know, can look at them. They're available on our website, um, and uh, and it just outlines what good practice looks like to help people understand, you know, who may be intrigued by this notion of achieving impact. How do I actually operationalize this? 
Um, and, and that, um, we also have done a lot of tools around, around impact measurement and management, um, like IRIS Plus, which is I-R-I-S Plus, which mm -hmm. is a system for impact measurement and management um, that is freely available as a public good um, you know, to any investor who's trying to figure out how you start with a big goal, you know, like helping to achieve gender um, equality and how you translate that into things that you can track on a deal by deal or business by business level. Hmm. Now, the UN and offices within the UN have been doing a lot of work on the sustainable development goals for quite a few years now. Uh, do you have uh, uh, any relationship with, let's say, the UN Capital Development Fund or other offices within the UN where you share information uh, and data and, and sources of of opportunity, uh, how, who are who are your partners essentially mm -hmm. outside of the traditional asset management yep. uh, industry yep. players uh, who participate in this focus on making sure that impact investing maintains its integrity? Yep. So we, we, we do work with a number of organizations uh, or a number of agencies at the UN, I should say, I see. You know, and, and um, there are a whole bunch of different parts of the United Nations that are focused on helping to mobilize more investment capital for the SDGs. Um, the uh, UN General Assembly that was most, uh, you know, that was hosted in 2019, uh, you know, so just a, a month ago, um, I participated in um, speaking at some of the high-level dialogues, they call them, um, where they're engaging mm -hmm. heads of state um, and private sector investors and, you know, heads of civil society organizations um, in how to drive more investment capital to achieve the SDGs. Um, and then we work with a whole set of other global institutions What's exciting about this time is that there is a recognition that we do need to be engaging all sectors of society, government, um, civil society, you know, NGOs, foundations, and um, nonprofit organizations, um, and investors and companies. Um, so we are very dedicated to that type of cross-sector um, uh, collaboration at the GIN, hmm. um, and we work with you know, organizations like the UN to help drive that. Okay, great. So. What other outcomes from the GIN Investor Forum can you share with our Sustainable Finance podcast subscribers that you think will help them learn more about what the GIN is doing in terms of ongoing research and integration of impact investing and engagement and reporting, as we've just talked about, with a diverse global community of impact investors and asset managers that are actively participating mm -hmm. in this work now. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the overall theme of the conference was on focused on um, uh, scale with integrity. Mm -hmm. So, how do we mobilize more capital? But uh, you know, and how do we make sure it has the integrity um, of the focus on impact? Um, now, in terms of you know, high-level outcomes, you know, it was a great opportunity for us to bring together this global forum. Mm -hmm. And again, it was you know, over uh, 1,200 people from over 60 countries, um, all thinking about how to have an impact through their own portfolios um, and how to mobilize other investors uh, to be part of the impact investing movement. Um, one of the big things that we're coming out of it with is a, a great focus on our work around Iris Plus, which I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Helping to bring investors the tools that they need to be more sophisticated about how they can achieve impact results. Uh, and so if you start with an SDG, um, like providing clean and affordable um, uh, energy, um, how do you actually operationalize that into what you track in terms of your impact performance? Um, now, Iris Plus is designed to help start with that type of goal, connect you with the investment strategies, and then the core metrics that you can use to measure your performance against that uh, global goal. Um, so that's something that we, we've just launched recently and will be um, you, uh, continue to expand that globally. Um, I think another big theme, though, was um, around the urgency of this moment. Um, you know, and that there's a, um, you know, if you're looking at the data around climate change or around inequality, um, and that is driving a lot of political disruption all around the world. Um, and it's visceral now. You know, so people you know, can you know, see wildfires in their own communities. They can see flooding, you know, um, you know irregular weather patterns. Um, and, and it is something where I think there's a, um, a, a risk of people being driven to complacency or just to feel like paralysis 
you know, what can I do about these big issues? Yes. Um, what's important for everyone to recognize is that our money has a relationship to those issues. Um, and it can be a, you know, a, a symptom uh, or a driver of kind of the, um, of the problems, or it can be a force for good. Mm. And what we were focusing our forum on is helping to mobilize this shift in thinking that finance can be a force for good and that impact investing, you know, the intentional focus on achieving a positive impact alongside a financial return um, can be a powerful force for shifting the needle on some of these big global issues. Great. Well, Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us today on the Sustainable Finance Podcast, and we look forward to continuing this conversation in the future. What should our Sustainable Finance Podcast subscribers be on the lookout for from the gin as they continue to educate themselves and their investor clients about the benefits of social, environmental, and impact investing uh, into the growth of the next economy. Well, thank you for having me, and thanks for this important conversation and for helping to get the word out uh, to, to all the important people out there who are thinking about these issues and trying to build them into their own investment practices. Um, so the, the GIN has a whole bunch of resources that are available for free. Um, uh, we do a lot of research on impact investing. We provide tools and resources for impact measurement. Uh, we have educational programming, um, and that's all available through our website. Uh, so if you look at um, the and that's mm -hmm. spelled T-H-E-G-I-I-N dot O-R-G. Um, we're on Twitter. Uh, if you prefer to follow us on social media, um, we would love to have you. Um, and it's at the Jin. Uh, and then I'm also on Twitter at um, Amit K. Bori, which is A-M-I-T-K-B-O-U-R-I. Great. Uh, so we'd look forward to being in touch with everyone um, who's part of this conversation. Terrific. Well, I want to thank Ahmed Bori, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of the Global Impact Investing Network, that's G-I-I-N dot org, right, for joining that's us right. on the Sustainable Finance Podcast today. Ahmed, please tell our subscribers uh, if there are other sources of information or links that they can go to about particular uh, studies that you think are important for them to look at now or uh, just ways that they can keep your story uh, at the gin in front of their investor clients and in their own thoughts going forward. Well, great. Well, I think um, I'd recommend if you're just getting up to speed on impact investing, starting with our annual survey, which is an overarching view of the trends in the market. Um, what we have on our website, though, is um, not only our research, but we list a lot of other people's research. So you can use that as a hub of information. Great. Um, and then, of course, if you see something you like, um, follow up with that organization and, and go a bit deeper on their work. Uh, so hopefully it's a great portal into a whole wealth of resources that are available uh, throughout the market. Great. All right. Well, to our subscribers for the Sustainable Finance Podcast, I want to thank you for joining us. And please join us again next week for another episode of the podcast as well as for quarterly sustainable finance webinars, which feature panels of sustainable and impact investing experts like Amit Bori in dialogue about important developments in the industry. I'm Paul Ellis, your host for these podcasts and webinar programs, and this is the Sustainable Finance Podcast. <laughs>